Tanya Hoffman's fabulous. Tanya Hoffman's fabulous. Tanya Hoffman's fabulous, fabulous TV show. that you're here back with me today. This is Tanya Hoffman's fabulous TV show. And I am so excited today because I've got Marcus Carter. Yes, we have a man in the room. And isn't he adorable? Look at that face. So we're going to hear a little bit from Marcus in a minute. Hey, Marcus, how are you? I'm doing just fine, Tanya. How are you? <laughs> Fantastic. So, you know, what's really exciting is that every one of our guests come on and give me and you, amazing offers. So make sure you stick around to the end of the whole thing so that you can find out what Marcus is giving away today. It's always worth the while, believe me. And you won't want to miss any part of this anyways. So what I wanted to talk a little bit today is, you know, I always like to give you a tip, something to kind of walk away with. And for me, being out in the world of speaking and connecting with people and getting to know so many amazing people like Marcus, like others, is really how to go beyond yourself. And I know usually as women, we have a tendency to devalue ourselves. And I know some of you guys out there, you have too. Um, and really kind of owning that moment, owning how you are fabulous, that you have a message that will resonate with someone and change their life. And I always looked at it as, because I'm a recovering introvert, and I know a lot of people have a hard time believing that, but I am. And I even find myself in situations now where I'm kind of stuck in the corner, and all of a sudden I'm like, why am I stuck in the corner? I need to get out and talk to people. And it's still to this day challenging, but it does get easier. And I love that Marcus really helps women, especially ladypreneurs is what he calls it. Don't you love that? Um, how to be in business and instead of focusing on the things that really don't matter as much as really kind of putting yourself into the throes of it. So Marcus is the go mentor. I love that title. Director of one of my chapters in Chicago for the Public Speakers Association. So he's a leader. I love hanging around leaders, right? And then also nationally recognized as a speaker. He speaks all over the place and has two books, not one, but two. And he really goes out and has such a heart. And every time I've spoken to him, every time I listen to him, I learn not just something new, but I get a different perspective, which is tough because most people just tell you things, but they don't give you a perspective. So how are you doing, Marcus? I am doing just fine, Tanya, and I'm, I would love to take you on the road with me because nobody has ever made me sound as good as you just made me sound. So um, <laughs> yeah, I'll be looking for you. There you go. There you go. We need to partner up together. That sounds like a fun thing. So you say that you can really kind of help people, especially women, um, kind of hone in their business. What do you mean by that? I really feel like I can – I don't feel like I've reinvented the wheel, but I really feel like I can assist with the then what. You know that then what, that once you finish the book, then what do you do? <laughs> that once the business is open, then what do you do? Once the website is up – then what do you do? Because we all have this assumption that once we write it, once we declare that we're a coach, that people are just going to come in droves and stop what they're doing to be our customers and clients. And we all know that's not the case. Right. So what do you usually find is like the first step that most people have to go through? Being able to wrap somebody's head around the idea that your audience is not everybody. <laughs> you have a particular niche, a particular target that is specifically, they are probably sitting at home like, I wish somebody could help me with this. Um, with me being from Chicago and being a sports guy, I always like to use the analogy, Michael Jordan decided to not play basketball for a little while to play baseball. And even though he was Michael Jordan to us, him playing baseball kind of didn't fit. 
So sometimes when an entrepreneur or a ladypreneur, you set out in business, we put ourselves out there as Michael Jordan playing baseball. But when we get our target market, our target niche, that's Michael Jordan playing basketball. So I really spend some time making sure that we identify who you're talking to and who your product or service, who it really fits and who it can help. Exactly. I think the hardest thing for most people, I know I even had clients that they want to fit into some arena or want to fit into a certain class or whatever. And it's just so not them that they wonder why they can't make it make a headway out of it. Right. And not to and not to shoot myself in the foot. I would love to uh, have a lucrative business. But I see so many ladypreneurs, entrepreneurs that say, okay, my business isn't going right, so I'm just going to throw money at it. I'm going to get a brand new website. I'm going to get a brand new logo. And you're not really focusing on, like, who do you serve? Who does your product or service really help? And how do I get my product or service in front of those people? Not just let me glitz up my website or or pay for more vendor appearances, so on and so forth. You kind of got to get to the heart of the matter, I believe. And don't you find that it's really about your message, you know, because they're not buying your product. They're not buying a service. They are buying you. And that is a scary proposition for most people because who wants to focus on them? You know, they'd rather focus on the product. You know, my doctors have the best, you know, formulas for whatever it is or whatever. You know, it's I keep bringing it back, even speakers. It's not about what you're saying. It's about who you are and how you're saying it. And are you resonating with the people that you're talking to? And and here's my shameless PSA plug. (laughs) That's something that we have to worry about, but we carry tremendous power and we can carry tremendous weight with how that same message that you're talking about, Tanya, how it's being given out. We can control what the audience receives, so we have to be really careful with what we transmit. So we can control what you just talked about. And you have to be flexible. You know, I find in front of, you know, if I go to an audience, every audience is a little bit different. And just like in sales and marketing, you have to kind of adjust for where you're speaking, where you're putting an ad, where you're – what shows that you have a – if you're going to do a vendor booth – Pick the right show. <laughs> Don't go to an event that the, there's the whole wrong mo- target market in front of you. you know? <laughs> and, I, and I think that's similar to you. You ever take a picture and somebody say, hey, could you get me from my good side? You want to be very, very selective about the type of stimuli and the content that you put out because – You don't want to run the risk of wasting time. We're entrepreneurs. We do not have the infrastructure of a Walmart and a McDonald's, and we can't just throw money at things. So that three hours spent at an event, that's time that we can't get back. So being able to really zero in to make sure that we're taking the right steps and the most efficient and effective steps, that's huge. And that's what I kind of like to help my customers and clients with. And don't you find, you know, that most people have the concept – Uh, They kind of have an employee mindset, right? They want to do something, get paid for it, and be done, which is what we call one-off selling, right? Instead of creating this environment of people who come to you, who love you, who want to be with you and hear from you over and over and over again, over and over and over and over and over and over again. And instead of just saying goodbye, you want them to stay with you. And. It's funny you bring that up because the things you bring up on one end that can be, if we don't take care of them, that potentially could be a problem, those also are the good parts. Because if we develop that community that you're talking about, that's the way to actually make the money that we like to make. So you might have the person that signs up for your workshop or or might attend your, your speaking session or might buy your book. But if you get that person that actually likes you and, and, and really gravitates to what you're talking about, you can't let them go after one time. you got to be able to walk them through your whole sales funnel, your whole process, and maximize each and every customer. And that's how we can compensate for not having a large infrastructure. And TV, Well, we don't all have TV shows like Tanya. That's how we can compensate for things like that. Right. You just come on mine. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, it's challenging for people because they see what others do, and they think, well, that's what I have to do. But they don't look at the strategy behind why that person did it. And I think that's what people get really stuck with is they miss the strategy because they never ask. 
you know, even for, say, your phone call, voicemail. One of the things that irritates me so much is when I contact somebody and I have no idea if the person I'm ringing is the person's phone number that I just dialed because it doesn't say. And if you're a speaker, if you're an entrepreneur, hello, it's about them engaging you, not getting a, you know, Hello, thank you for calling. Leave a message. I mean, they want to hear who you are in that phone call. And so look at everything as marketing. Don't you find some things like that? And to even take what you're saying a little bit further, and I picked that tip up from one of your trainings that you did, along with when you have your email address, make sure you attach your website. Make sure it's not just at gmail.com. So that's the Tanya tip that I picked up. But another thing that, that you pick up, that's something that we can control as speakers. A lot of times, the first book I wrote is a, a urban romance novel. Has nothing to do with inspiration. Has nothing to do with motivation. Has nothing to do with helping entrepreneurs or ladypreneurs grow and expand their business. But gangbusters with that book because if you you come across and you're passionate and you really want to help people, people just want to be close with you and connect you, and connect with you, and whatever way that they can support you, they will. So that's why it's very, very important that you do show them that personality. You do, you do show them how passionate that you are. And we can't take for granted that we get to pick the business that we're in. And I think that goes back to when you said, Tanya, how maybe an entrepreneur may say, that business over there looks like it's working. I'm going to try that because it's lucrative. That won't work. Us as speakers, our biggest tool is ourselves. Our biggest, our greatest business card is ourself. Our greatest advertisement is ourself. So let people know the real you. Pick something that you're passionate about. And I like to say, when you get on stage, you just open the door and let God in and just let whatever's about to happen happen. And everybody else in the room just gets to be witness. Yeah, because I think a lot of people try to perfect themselves too much and they lose their personality. That's what I see in a lot of you know, people that teach, you know, speakers how to speak, they try to perfect them too much. And it's not about the perfect words that you choose. It's about the personality that you choose. Who are you and why would they care? And really the most brilliant moments that ever happens to me on stage is when something horrible happens. <laughs> and people are like, what? Because people like to see vulnerability. They like to see reality. And they want to connect with you. They really do want to understand your world and how you're going to be able to help them. And that's really when I – and I, I want to say when I started off, but I still feel like I'm the, the constant work in progress. And that was one of the biggest mistakes I made when I started. I wanted to, instead of being able to reach people and say, okay, I'm just starting out. Can you, can you tell me anything? Um, can you teach me something? I wanted to say, okay, yeah, I've been speaking forever. And, and, and yeah, I'm a, a national speaker, and, and I've done this. So I just wanted to fit in as opposed to being able to soak up and sponge off all these wonderful people that I was around. And I kind of just wanted to posture. And I think I wasted the first six months of, of, of my my endeavor as an entrepreneur, just trying to posture. And when I kind of just said, okay, I'm a human being. Um, I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm trying to find my way just like everybody else. It seems like that's when things finally started to click. Now, especially as entrepreneurs, we all go to bed, wake up in the middle of the night, wondering where's the next client? Where's the next client? How am I going to pay the rent? How am I going to pay the bills? So until you get into that six-figure stratosphere and you start seeing these $20,000 speaker fees, we're all looking for the next one, and that's what the people in the audience can connect with. I don't have Tony Robbins in my audience. I don't have Tanya Hoffman in my audience, not all the time. So <laughs> I need to be able to connect with them in the most honest way, and that's to let them know that, hey, I'm passionate about something, and just like you, I want to take my passion, and I want to turn it to something that I can be compensated for. So how can yeah. I help you? And you got that's an honest moment, you know. Uh, yeah. It's, sometimes it's hard to do. And I see that for, you know, speakers and for entrepreneurs and, and even just really anybody, one of the things I see, it keeps them back so far 
is just not being themselves. You know, it's kind of an amped up myself, right? So I'm not walking around the house going, ah, all the time. <laughs> but it is me. The words I choose, the mistakes I make, it's just who I am. And a lot of people try to be somebody else. I want to be that person. I want to be Marcus. Oh, my gosh, he's so fabulous. I want to be Marcus. And then you forget that you that people are wanting you. They're not wanting somebody else's personality in you. Or they're trying to be on stage or even selling, say, you know, makeup or, you know, something. It doesn't really matter what you're selling. It's about the message you're getting across. Can you help that person? And then are you being real with them? And nowadays, people want real people. They want to see fabulous people and connect with them. They want to, in real life, we all have levels. Um, Like you say, you can't run around "Ah," all the time. Uh, (laughs) So even within the contents of a speech, there's going to be some high points, some really passionate moments. Then, there, then there's going to be some some low points. So, so people in real life, people laugh together, they cry together, and all we're doing is condensing that into about a 30-minute span. Um, lucky for us, we typically get to pick our audience, so we get to put content out that a certain audience that should respond to that will come and pay attention to. Um, as a speaker, from the speaker aspect, I always like to let people know we have so much control over our audience, over our content. It's kind of like playing chess. Um, If you're the type of person that you're funny when you speak, (laughs) you would want to make sure that you maybe try to get an audience in there that maybe enjoys comedy. Or or if you're somebody, obviously for us, if if we deal with entrepreneurs, we would want to get an audience that has an entrepreneurial spirit because that audience can, can egg you along and we have to control over those things. So we need to take full advantage. Um, Things that you bring up, I like to call parts of our our, our speaker toolbox. I I like to say it's pitch. Being able to not go drive so hard all the time, but like bring it back and say, okay, this is a human moment. I just want to connect with you. I want to talk with you. Because for us, entrepreneurs in the audience, we're all scared to death. You know, so they want, okay, let's slow it down. They want to see that you're human, even though that you might be be seem a little bit more successful or seem like you're doing a little bit better. No, I'm, I'm looking for the, the next client just like you, um, trying to get compensated handsomely for my services just like you. And to me, that's the easiest way to make a, a connection. Comedians do it all the time. They, they talk, Kevin Hart, he talks about his family members, and that makes you really able to relate because you say, hey, I have an uncle like that. Or in your business, I'm going through that. I remember when that customer did that to me, and you can really relate and get clients that way. Absolutely. And I think that's one of the hardest things for me to have learned because I wanted to get the information out there. I need to make sure every wall and walks out with this info. And then I forgot that, you know, sitting there and not smiling and trying to push it into their head was not helping anyone. And when I gave that up and said, okay, why am I so serious? I am never that serious, you know, and started going, okay, I can't do it that way. I'm not being relatable to the audience. Um, Even just in sales, you know, I I would try to overwhelm people because I thought that's what I was supposed to do. Instead of just giving them enough so that they can absorb it, really utilize that information and figure out a game plan just to move a little bit. Instead of trying to move them from, you know, zero to a thousand just move that one space and that's so hard for most people to do well what i find interesting and in this conversation we're having right now tanya what i think people should take from it when we're talking about steps that you may be able to take to grow your business we're not talking about sales we're not talking about marketing we're not talking about promotions we're talking about being yourself um being able to be careful with you can pick your audience, being, being careful with your content, being open enough to let people in. And a caveat being when you let people in, being responsible enough for what they see is actually credible. And, yeah. and a lot of times I let people know that we're speakers. We're not marketers. We're not promoters. We're, we're not into sales. Now, we need to know how to sell, but that's not what we do. So we need to have these conversations. And growing your businesses, to me, is more or less this conversation as opposed to, okay, you need to make sure your website says this. 
Yeah. Well, and if you look at, and this is always the challenge, is everyone comes in into owning their own business or being a speaker or whatever, and they have their expertise, and they know it to a T, right, that you can walk somebody through that whole process and when you meet with someone, when they're telling you what they want to do and everything, you already know how to create a checkmate. You already know how to take them all the way through the whole game to get them to that, yay, we won, right? The problem is, is they haven't even moved their first pawn yet. And this is the challenge that I always have. I can look at somebody, I could tell you exactly how you could go from not being known at all to being an international speaker and bringing in hundreds of thousand dollars a year. But most people are still trying to figure out how to move a first pawn. And so if I'm talking about checkmate and they're just trying to get the first concept, then I've not only overwhelmed them, but I can't help them. So I had to learn how to help them move that first pawn and then the second pawn, right, step by step so that we can get to the checkmate. I agree. Now, I want to – I would love to chime in, but I haven't, I haven't seen that uh, six-figure that six figure check yet. So <laughs> you, you lost me there, but I still – I'm still – I'm right there behind you because I agree with the idea that – those steps you're talking about, they need to be to scale because if you learn how to move that pawn and, and if you do it the right way, that will teach you how to move the bishop, move the rook, ultimately move up to the queen, move up to the king. And that's something that I, I say about my boot camp when I, when I work with my ladypreneurs. I say that like what I'm teaching you is scalable. So it will work for this self-hosted introductory event. It will work for the speaking engagement that has 10 people in it, the same way it'll work for a speaking engagement that has 500 to, to 5,000. But you, like you say, you have to learn how to move that pawn first. So it was important that you start there. And I believe a lot in momentum. That if you, if you, I spent seven years in sales and the best time to, to you're at your best right after you've just made a sale. That's when you're at your best. So it's about momentum. So after you come out of that, that, that speaking engagement where 25 people or, or 100 people or 1,000 people feel like you changed their life, announce your next one. Ride that wave. And that's what the people want. Uh, you need to make the transactions and the interactions emotional. And I think we do a lot of things to make these, these interactions transactional. Hey, would you yes. buy this? What if I cut this in half? Make it an emotional response. I like Marcus. He makes me feel better about myself. I like Tanya. She makes me feel better about myself. And surround yourself in that environment. And everything else will come. But it comes to having that passion and being open and willing. And a lot of the things we're talking about in this conversation. We need exactly. To, we need to make this into a TV show. Hmm. Maybe we could do that. <laughs> 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 and that's what it's all about is taking action, you know. Oh, you, usually, I mean, almost 99% of the time, the reason people don't move forward is because they're not moving forward, right? They're staying stationary. They're complacent. They're like, I'll do it tomorrow. Oh, I'm too tired. I, you know, I don't know how to do it. I've never done it before. All the excuses – to keep you from being fabulous because every single one of you that's listening know you are. You just have to own it. you got to make it part of your personality, and then you can become fabulous like Mr. Marcus here, right? I mean, look at that smile. <laughs> and really, you know, how do you connect with people? You know what? You just pick up the phone, and you're like, hey, Marcus, I saw you on this TV show. Really? I mean, that is how easy it is, right? And I don't know why people, and I do know why. It's because it's, a lot of it is fear. Oh, I don't want to bother Tanya. I'm like, really? I love being bothered. I love connecting with people. I love seeing how we can change each other's lives because you bring something that I can't bring. Marcus brings something to me that I don't have. So I need to have Marcus in my life and vice versa. So don't feel like whatever it is, it's your hang up. Cause you know, believe me, I've gone through all my fears. You know, I had a fear of voice, my voice. Oh, I can't do, no one should listen to my voice. It's too awful. I'm like, I went on a AM radio station for four months and I tell you, it was like the shocker of a lifetime because 
I always had an issue with my voice. And I went and told a whole networking group that I had been part of for a year that I was going to just do a radio show. And, and I was so excited. I had a leader walk over to me and tell me, Tanya, you can't be on the radio. You have a horrible voice for radio. I mean, it hit that button so hard, I ran to the bathroom crying. And then I looked around, I'm like, oh, my gosh, I have not been in a bathroom crying since I was in high school. What am I doing? I am an adult woman. I can make my own decisions. And then I get to the radio show, and the producer, I was like, okay, my husband, he's got that radio voice. He's going to do most of the talking. He's like, nah, you've got the radio voice. You have something that people are going to recognize. It is different. So you, it's up to you to make those changes and realize it's a plus, never a negative, that you have something that's different than others. So I love that. And I love Marcus. Don't you think that when you just you get those experiences and you have those people go, you can't do that. And I'm like, ah, watch me. <laughs> And, and you hit it right on the head. Whenever I deal with somebody and they're having a hard time finding out who, the, who their, their target audience is, I say, go look in the mirror. Because those flaws, those things, well, perceived flaws, those are the things that there's somebody out there just like you that maybe was like, okay, I don't have that radio voice, but I would like to do this. And you just stepping out there, just that call to action, that, that, that ability to just do it, you create your own market, you create yourself as an expert, and if you market to that audience, they're like, once they walk in the room, they're ready. You got them hooked already because you're dealing with something that makes them not be able to sleep at night. You are the bridge between where they like to be and where they are right now. And that's simply by just being open and being willing to share your vulnerability about something that somebody else thought was a flaw. Exactly. People, look at look in the mirror. Whenever you're having a problem with anything, first is take take a layer off. Usually, not in a not in a bad way. But <laughs> look in the mirror. Look in the mirror to find out what makes you tick. If you're not making enough money, what would you spend money on? If, if you don't have enough people in the audience, what would you go attend? And that's a great way in your business to find out because there's nothing better than sitting across from somebody and you can just be completely honest and they're sitting there like. <laughs> You can tell somebody, this was my deepest fear, and they're like, wow, and you dealt with it. Man, you're great. And it's like, no better feeling in the world. I think we got it too easy, Tanya. Oh, it was so much fun. It is so much fun. Well, I love that you've been on our show, and you have a special offer today. So what is that? I would like to take as a special guest for well, as a special offer to everybody that took the time to, to share moments with me and Tanya I would like to give something back. I would like you to reach out to me and connect, and I would like to hear about your great business, your great idea, your great product, your great service, and I would like to offer you any insight that I possibly can. Um, and hopefully, most times, I'm able to offer some information that you can take and you can use immediately, immediately. Um, as an entrepreneur, a lot of us, we start this thing, we have a five-year plan, a two-year plan, a three-year plan, and we kind of negate the fact that, okay, next month this has to happen, or for, even for my business to grow, there needs to be something coming in. And we end up putting a lot more into our businesses than we actually get out. And I really feel like that's my focus. That's how I like to help people. So as a gift for spending time with me and Tanya, if you come visit me, and I'll show you how, I'll tell you how, Phone number, 312-489-8792. I'm going to say it five times. 312-489-8792. Say it really slow. See, this is Tanya's the gift that keeps on giving. 312 <laughs> I just want and you know, know your you're backwards you're when you're up. doing that. <laughs> okay, okay. Bear with me. Bear with me. I'm on Chicago time. That's why we're the second city. But if you just share with me your first name and your email address, I will make sure that I connect with you and we'll sit down and we'll talk. And I guarantee you, in our conversation, you'll find something that you can immediately apply to your business and you won't even have to thank me for it. I appreciate your time. 
awesome. Everyone, I mean, please take advantage of that. I mean, why would you not take advantage of that? So reach out and connect with Marcus. Have them come and speak at your event because obviously you'll want him now, right? You're like, ah, and figure out what's your game plan. You know, if you've got a similar target market to, then, um, with Marcus, why don't y'all even collaborate together? I love it when people reach out and want to do something and take that initiative because, as we know, most people don't. So thank you, for Marcus, for being on my show today. I really appreciate it, and I hope you come back on, like, super soon. I will. I'm looking forward to it. I, I, you might just see me in Texas at the grocery store in the, in the, in the, in the grocery aisle, just like you. So I'm trying <laughs> to get down there. I'm trying to get close. I have a great time every time we connect. Thank you, Tanya. <laughs> Sounds like a plan. All right, everyone. Make sure you come to our next show. You do not want to miss us because, you, as you see, over and over and over again, we have an amazing lineup of incredible guests. Because why? These are my friends. These are the people I hang with, and I want you to get to know them as well. So thank you, and I will see you next time.